as a second interview in our summer series here at I Had to Ask, I talked with Todd Albright, a Detroit native, and he plays the 12 string guitar. I caught up with him at Merle Fest and listened on to see why I had to ask. I'm here with Todd Albright at Merle Fest. Welcome to the show. Why, well, thank you. You've been playing for 25 years. Oh, yeah. Um, how have you seen the music scene change in over the years? Well, the music business has changed quite a bit as far as uh, uh, how a musician is compensated has changed because of digital. And uh, now you're obliged to tour more than in the past. Artists didn't have to tour as much and they could live off of record sales. Can't do that anymore because of Spotify and iTunes and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's still the same. You get in the car and you drive. So you recently released a new album in March, is that correct? That is. Can you tell my listeners a little bit about it? Well, that's uh, it's called Detroit 12 String, and it's uh, uh, Third Man Records put it out, Jack White's label, and uh, Jack's a big fan of the country blues. And that came out in March, and uh, we're just grinding away. That sounds good. So I heard that you like to talk about the history of your music. Oh, yeah. yeah. So can you give me some historical facts about your music? Well, I mean, everything I play is typically from the golden era of guitar playing, which in my mind is the late 1800s through the, through World War Two. You know, anywhere between late 1800s to about 1939, 1940. You know, just before the first war. Guitars were finger-picked more then. Since then, people were flat-picked, and it just became a thing. So now finger-picking is, especially in the blues, is, is kind of an anomaly. You don't see it as much anymore. But, uh, I mean, during the folk revival of the 60s, it came back, and a lot of my friends like Roy Bookbinder or Paul Jeremiah were instrumental in help ushering that and keeping it alive because they learned from guys that were still alive from the 30s that recorded you know and then I learned from those guys so it's the folk tradition just keeps going so who are some of your favorite guitar players well I mean since I'm a, a 12 string guitar player uh, a lot of it's Blind Willie McTell and Lead Belly and uh, a fellow named George Carter who only made two records two four songs total Merle Fest, what do you, what do you feel like Merle Fest is all about? Merle Fest is cool. I mean, I'm really excited to be here. It's, uh, I've not, this is my first trip into North Carolina, so I'm just kind of inspired by the, the scenery. It's incredible, you know. So my podcast is called I Had to Ask, and I was wondering, what question do you wish people had to ask you when they interview you? What question do you wish they had to ask me? Uh, no. Uh, Nobody ever asked how I like my steak cooked. You're what? My steak cooked. It's medium. <laughs> well, I, um, so if you could go back in time and give a younger version of yourself advice, what would you say? All the stuff that you're doing, stop doing that and do something else. And what advice do you have for young musicians? Uh, play as much as you possibly can every single day for as many people as you can constantly. Just don't ever stop. If you don't stop, eventually they have to let you in the club. This, this sounds like a good summary of all the advice I've been given all weekend. Just keep playing. That's it. That's all you got to do. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell my listeners? Uh, uh, just... Uh, they, if they're if they're listening and they're not at Merle Fest, they're missing out. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to this episode of the I Had to Ask Summer Series. Stay tuned and you'll hear more interviews from Merle Fest 2017.